Hi, welcome to The Stitch TV Show. I'm Lynn. And I'm Pam. We're happy you're joining us today. The Stitch is an online quilt talk show, the perfect soundtrack for your sewing room. Join us for twice monthly talk shows, virtual stitch-ins, celebrity interviews, podcasts, book clubs, <laughs> possibly even more. You can learn more at thestitchtvshow.com. Our show today is brought to you by The Stitch TV Show Shop. You can find digital quilt patterns, brand show merchandise like t-shirts, mugs, laser kit appliques, and more. Today we're going to be talking about quilted pillows and tips for working with prints. We're joined by our newest pattern, A Star is Born, in the abstract garden line from Krista Watson for Bernatex Fabrics. You can get the digital pattern at our shop, shop.thestitchtvshow.com. So... This is the first episode we're filming since we're back from Quilt Market. If you were not aware of all the weird, wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey stuff happening on the last, <laughs> the last two episodes. Two. <laughs> and we're it's a little been, out of practice. Just saying. <laughs> I'm like, what do we it's do? It's been a long Show time notes? since we've actually done this. <laughs> Teleprompter Like scripts? two months. Oh, yeah. It's been two months. Yeah. So we're back. We're back. We're back. I know you didn't feel like we were gone, which is good. We planned it that way. Oh, but we, we felt that 16-hour road trip. <laughs> Dear Lord. Two times. Yes. After it was over, we were like, I love you. We're not doing this again. Ever. <laughs> Ever. The road trip. The market, we will totally do. Yes. But the road trip, no. Yeah, no. We're going to be was... SMRT, and we're going to figure out how to ship things. Exactly. That's ex and how to fly our happy selves to yes. Houston. So if you missed it, we do have uh, a special one-hour virtual stitch in that recaps our experience at market. You can watch that to learn more about shower chicken. Yes, shrink wrap, like all of the fun. It was it was a memorable experience that neither one of us are gonna forget anytime soon. If we do, we're gonna have to go back and watch that recap. Oh, I'm it was glad. hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad we did that. Yes. So then now we're like, you remember when? Yes, go to the tape. Go to so, tape. Go to tape. So Well, we've done market. We since we got back from market, what have you been doing? Thanksgiving. We did Thanksgiving. And you know what else I did? Slept. I slept. That must be nice. Like, I know. She went back to work and yeah. I slept. But um, I did do some selfish sewing, which was sewing just for me. As well. yeah. I'm not quite done with it yet. No, well, mine was more sewing for other people, aka Christmas gifts. I did some Christmas gifts. I did. I have been working on some Christmas gifts, but I did take time and I've been working on a selfish project for me. And if you watched our stitch in um, for. December, you'll see December pieces 14th. of it <laughs> behind our yep. my sewing room. I've been working on the New York Beauty Blocks. We might reference those in a later segment, but right now we're going to talk about quilted pillows because those this is this episode will drop just before Christmas 2018. I think these are great oh, yeah. ideas for Christmas. Well, and blocks that you love but you don't love enough to repeat the process. <laughs> I've had some of those blocks. I had some of those blocks too. Like I made one and went, we are done. We are so done. With this, this is going to be an amazing tiny quilt. <laughs> yes, right here. This is it. <laughs> so quilted pillows okay. um, are basically pillow covers, essentially. Uh, for the most part, when I do them, I get the pre made forms or. I get pre made forms. Or like if you buy a new couch or a chair or something, it'll come with a pillow and then you're in it usually matches the couch fabric exactly, which is weird. And it's usually a fabric that you can't wash. So I like to take that cover off and replace it with that's something That's a good that idea. I, I've never done that. Oh, yeah. That's how I did a Christmas pillow for my couch that I was like, I hate these pillow covers because I can't ever wash them. <laughs> so so you made just, myself a little quilted one for Christmas, and then right. you can quick and easy swap it in and out for seasons. Well, and I think that's cool, too. I mean, pillows in themselves, for decorating-wise, you can make... Christmas ones, you can make winter ones and spring. And I mean, you can kind of change up the look of your. I was going to see how many holidays you'd list. Oh. Let, we don't need to go there. No, because you know me. <laughs> I would like literally. Today is do them all. Cat Herder's Day. Mm -hmm. Do we have a pillow for that, Lynn? You know, my birthday is chocolate cake day. So I think we should make a pillow for that. Well, there you go. There you go. You know, well, National Chocolate Cake Day. Somewhat related, I made placemats for my table. And so on one side, it's like charm squares that I've sewn together. But then on the other side, for each kid, I found a paper piecing pattern of a piece of cake. 
Oh, and there I, you go. They each got their favorite flavor of cake. And the paper beads seem better. Yeah. So then when it's their birthday, they could just flip the placemat over, and now they have, like, the cake placemat. That's awesome. That's a good idea. That's pretty cute. Well, and I think, so, quilted pillows. So what do you do when you're making a quilted pillow? What do you um, consider? So I typically, for something that's going to be used on a couch or chair, I go with a 16-inch square. Like, you can go crazy with the bolsters and all that, but I just, I don't have as much success sewing circles as I do squares. Just going to put that out there. Uh, so typically the blocks that I'm making in various classes are 12 inches. So I'm adding, you know, a border Two to inch. that. Yeah. And I don't get too fancy with it because I want to be able to trim it down. If you like a firmer pillow and you get a 16 inch form, you want your cover to finish at 15 and then it's a little firmer. But if you like it super squashy, like you're going to lay on it or something, then you want to go true to size. I took a pillow class from a local, um, a sewing machine store, actually, and they taught us that whatever size of your pillow form is, that's what you cut your front and back to be. Hmm. So your pillows are full. Yes. There's no, like... Weird floppy corners. Right. Um, so if it's an 18-inch form, you cut it 18 inches for the front and back. And they taught us how to do cording, which was pretty easy. Um and they taught us how to do an invisible zipper. Piping is the devil's flourish. It, no, it really wasn't. It wasn't hard at all. It is when it comes to bags and you're sewing through layer, lining and outside. True. Like, oh, you're not oh. doing all that with, with pillows. You're not. So that makes that a little bit easier. And essentially on the cording, I don't think I brought one up where I did. Oh, yeah, I did. Where you do cording is, you know, you just kind of, to finish it off, one that just kind of does into each yes. other and then goes do you, smaller. Do you open it up and like trim out the cording bit? A little bit, yeah. Kind of cut it at an angle mm -hmm. and then it dives into each other and then it finishes like that. And I probably have an example of that. Which we'll show in a minute. Which we will show, yeah. Um, so cording, whether you want to do cording or not, not all pillows need cording. What about a knife edge? A knife edge is just... Make it a little bit bigger. And then you stitch around, so like a one inch knife yeah. edge. Yeah. You know. Then you would have to cut it bigger than what they taught us. Bigger than the form, yeah. Bigger than the form. And I guess it would be bigger than um, whatever your knife edge border you want it right. to be around. I typically, if I'm doing that, uh, one to two inches. You need to tell people what a knife edge is because I'm know. that may not be, and That's I don't true. have a sample of that. I didn't So do that. on some pillows, um, if make the cover like normal, make an 18 inch size for a 16 inch form. And when you flip it right side out, it's almost like top stitching, but it's not right on the edge. It's about an inch in. Right. Or two inches in, depending. And so then you've got that kind of floppy bit. It's like a, a yeah. It's just a nice. It's a nicer I don't finish. I want to say flange, but it's a yeah. yeah it's, it's a almost different like a flange. It is. Yeah. Um, and I don't tend to do those just because after a while, as the fabric wears, they get very, they don't hold, they don't have a lot of form or shape. Or, right. I guess you could put some shape to you them. Could. You could put some interfacing in there if you wanted right. to, but uh, it's just not something that. I don't know. I don't have a lot of decorative pillows. I have a lot of functional pillows that get like tossed around and the I pets think, sit on I them. think I have a tote in my Christmas stuff that's just decorative Christmas pillows. Oh, I have a tote full of Christmas stuffed animals. <laughs> I don't have Christmas stuffed animals. I have decorative pillows. I think they're, well. Been I have little, okay, so I have these little pillows that hang on all the bedroom doors that are needlepoint, needlepoint. We have. That are, you know, say cute things like, twas the night before, slept, you know. Ours are, um, that little door ribbon, hangers. little door hangers, but they're yeah. pillows. They're cute. Ours are not pillows. Ours are little figurines, like you could buy the panel and do the little figurines, and they're Raggedy Ann, Raggedy Andy, a rocking horse, a duck, and a block. Right. I hate to admit this. I haven't decorated for Christmas in quite a number of years. So when I do open up all the Christmas, It'll I'm be gonna like be Christmas morning. I'm going to be shocked at what I've got. Um, and I haven't done it because we've been going to my sister's house on a regular basis. So, and she okay. decorates very nicely. So, so the nice thing too about quilted pillows because they're a smaller size, you can go a little crazier with the quilting. Oh yeah. And because it's no not a huge commitment. 
Yeah. You can. Now, how particular are you? Because so when you're doing it, you have your front. You need to layer it like your traditional quilt with batting and a backing. And then you have the backing for the pillow as a separate layer. So you go and quilt it like you're just making a mini quilt. Oh, if are you're you, quilting it, yes. Are you investing in using good fabric or janky fabric on the inside? Like what janky, shows on the inside? complete oh, yeah. janky. Like muslin or like just wackadoo? Like stuff I will never Why do I quilts? have Elmo fabric? Nothing Did, wrong with Elmo fabric. No need for it in my house, just saying. I Well, right, yeah. Like totally stuff that you're like, I got this at the dollar store. Or <laughs> not that I find fabric at the dollar store. I don't. But, you know, every once in a while, yeah, you buy. It's like pillow surprise. Yeah, cheap fabric. It's always cheap or, fabric. Yeah, or like random off cuts. Or... But I will say, you don't have to quilt the pillow. With a backing. Right. Like sometimes I just, most of mine are just blocks. Huh. It's not even mine. quilted. No, I don't quilt mine. Hmm. None of the examples I have are quilted. Hmm. So I read her suggestions on the topics, and then I completely you just ignore did pillows them. Pillows out of blocks. This specifically made... says quilted pillows for your know. own teleprompter. I know. I know. So none of my examples are quilted. Just FYI. Hmm. But hmm. you didn't bring any, so it's true. There we go. It wouldn't fit in the bag that I brought. So. <laughs> All right, so when you finish the back, because I think this is important, though. When you finish the back of the pillow, I think you have some different choices on how to do that. I like an envelope style. Envelope style, which is like this. Yes. Now, because Lynn has finished hers by, like, folding the edge under two times, like you do if you're doing, like, a, a, a traditional hem, I tend to get a piece of fabric... And just fold it in half. So I cut it to twice this length and fold it in half. That way I don't have to worry about this edge finish here. Now it does use more fabric. But yeah, that used more fabric. No, but lots of times, like for seasonal pillows, I don't have a strong need for like Christmas fabric stash. So I'm good with, with doing that. So that's another option if you've got the fabric for it. Now how much space do you put in between the flap here and this here. At least four inch overlap. Yeah. If it's too short, oh, it like, it'll like oh. it open up. But if it's got a good four inch, and this is probably four inches, mm -hmm. um, it will give you a nice flat look. Yeah, otherwise it'll gap a little bit. Right, kind of thing. And this is, again, I didn't quilt it, but this is just an applique. Um, it was a class I took, and this was the block that we made in the class, and I didn't want to make a bigger thing so it just became a cute pillow now on mine because i do tend to quilt them and have the layer of batting in the front i come and do a layer of top stitching around the edge as well right. which helps it have a nicer finish because right. usually it's those kind of details that make things look po more polished for so either this pillow or back does not look polished it's fine no because you didn't quilt it so yours isn't as bulky and like rolling over right exactly but it does have a, um, uh, it, you know, I just finished it. There's no cording on this one. Mm -hmm. so. Now, you clip corners here? Yeah, I probably did. So what that means, for those that don't know, when you're sewing your back to your front and the right sides together and you kind of stitch the square all the way around, when you get to the corner, you just trim that seam allowance at an angle. Now, don't yeah. get it too close to the corner. You don't want to actually right. clip your threads. Um, but that'll reduce the bulk on the corner and make and it, it, make lay it a lot more flatter. pointy. Now, do you press them after you make it when you turn it right back out? This you, looks. You should. This looks like I pressed it Good because job. this has been on my um, bench in my library forever. It's like one of the common pillows. Okay. There you go. There you go. All right. So that's without cording. Without cording. Without cording. Now, this is with cording. <laughs> the devil's flourish. <laughs> and I did not do this one. I actually bought this oh, yeah. one. Um, this was... <laughs> Threads. That's how you know they're real. And um, a dock hair. Shocking. Shocking. Um, this one I bought at our auction mm -hmm. at the last uh, Guild quilt Guild, show. Yeah. So, and I bought it because this was a um, similar to, if not the exact kind of pattern... Of when we had the ribbons made for the quilt show, this was the mm -hmm. pattern I chose. And this is a free block, I 
available. Yeah. Like it yeah. finishes at 12, but you could shrink it down or up, and we'll put a link to that in the show notes. So when I saw the pillow, I was like, oh, that'll be neat for my memory of the show kind of thing, that I would have a pillow from there, which is similar to the ribbons. I will say, though, for I me— I was prepared in case I didn't win a ribbon. <laughs> I would have a pillow that looks like the ribbon. Now, I tend not to make pillows in white. I didn't get that choice, you know, because well, I yes, bought it. But. but just if you're thinking practically. Yeah, white. This does. We are not in a Scandinavian <laughs> child and pet free house at my place. Yeah, we like, aren't either. But this does. This oh, yeah. is in a room that's not as used as. And the, the bench that this sits on is a old wooden pew from a church, from my. My family's church that that my husband's family have gone to for years, and so they auctioned off the church pews, and so we bought one, and my father in law cut it down to the right size for our library. So I have a church pew in my library. So that's what this sits on. So it's not a real comfortable. <laughs> See, it's one of those old wooden church pews. <laughs> So, but the reason I brought this one is because of the cording. She did some cording on it, which I like. And this, I can tell, the cording is uh, bias. If you're doing that, that's important, particularly if you're going around corners. That'll yeah. make it lie on a lot flatter. So you're sewing the, or you're cutting the strip of fabric on the bias to wrap around the cording. And this, I thought was interesting how she did this, was she put an invisible zipper in and then put a flap over the zipper. Mm, no, that's a standard zipper. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you're right. It's a standard zipper. So she put a flap over the zipper. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to wash this, it being white, there may be need. Yeah. Um, if you wanted to wash this, you could. But it's just a really, a, that's a nice finish. And she put it down from the mm. edge, which is nice to get in and out. Oh, yeah. Because if you do it in the middle, that can be, like on the envelope style, that can sometimes be a little bit of a struggle. And if you do it right at the edge, then that the flap can stick up and show. So this is about an inch down, which is a good a good length. Yeah. So anyway, I like this. And of course, I like this pillow. Mm -hmm. Yay. Yay. All right. The last pillow that is one that I've actually done. And um, I bought down pillows for it because I like the way down is. But down is definitely going to be more squishy. So you, you know, the other two pillows I showed you were poly blend. And they have a very diff different feel. So if you're using down pillows, just realize that whatever it is needs to be able to be squished because that's just kind of how down pillows are. Now, I did this embroidery. I bought this embroidery kit and did this embroidery, and it had um, crayons that colored it, and it was just a nice sit-around project for me. Um, but I put cording in it, and I matched the cording to the secondary border. Mm -hmm. So I thought it gave it a nice clean look. Um, right here, and this is not where you're going to be able to tell, but right here is where the two. So I didn't, you don't want to have the cording go together on a corner. You oh, yeah. definitely, like on a side is better. But unless I pointed that out to you, you wouldn't be able nope, to, wouldn't to ch tell that at all. And then they had us, this was part of the class that I took, but we had, we put an invisible zipper in. Um, so... Yeah, an invisible zipper is different from a standard one because right. the zipper tape rolls up over the teeth. Right. So you don't see the teeth as well. Yeah. Always. And so it's got an invisible zipper, so you can't even see that the teeth are in there. Um, so that you could get it out and wash it if you wanted to. And this actually does sit in my... Um, oh, it's cute. I made this for my husband because he likes airplanes. See, you would like this. It's a cat in airplanes. It's a dog. It looks like a cat. It's a dog. Look at the ears. It's a dog, maybe. <laughs> I'm out. Anyway, but with airplanes. Oh, what it needs is a, a car right there for it to crash into. <laughs> for those that have watched the stitch in. So, call back. so, but those are kind of your choices when you're making. Now, I didn't quilt any of mine. It's true. So, if you're looking for quick gifts, pillows are fairly quick to make, I mm -hmm. think, and nice. I think they can be yeah. really nice gifts. And then the zippers are fairly easy to find. They're at most big box stores. And if you put the flap over it, you don't have to match it to the backing fabric. Exactly. Right, exactly. Yeah. And invisible zipper. I would say when you're doing a pillow, if you're doing um, a zipper in the back, and you don't have to with those flaps, you don't, just four inches. Um, 
get a zipper foot. They're so oh, yes. much easier if you have a zipper foot. Just trust us on this one. It is just a lifesaver if you have a zipper foot. Yes. And I think you know if you have any kind of machine, usually there's a specialty one for your brand. If it's a standard right. Shank machine, you know, the zipper feet are, tip, I think, under $10 when I found them right. online. And honestly, okay, so of the all the feet that I have for my machine, of course, I use my quarter-inch foot. Mm -hmm. I use my open-toe embroidery foot because I do a lot of applique and specialty stitches. Um, and the other one's the zipper foot, you know, because you'll make, especially this time of year, like I've been making little zipper totes to give away mm -hmm. and pillows if you're putting a zipper in them. It's just a really common, I find it to be one of the more common feet that I go back to and use compared to others that I don't. Mm -hmm. Like I don't use the blind hem foot ever. Yeah. Just saying. I've, I've never I mean, it looks neat. I've seen it, good instances of where you can right, use it. Right, why like, you would use it, but whoop. I don't do that kind of sewing, so I've never used it. So, um, and, and I will say, so... A, a nice strategy for giving quilted pillows. The first year you give someone the quilted pillow cover with the form in it, then the next year all you gotta do is give them a cover for the same size. You don't have to give them another form because they can swap them out. Oh, good idea. Because I do that for my mom where she's like, she's got a set of pillows for her bed and she's like, oh, we got a new quilt. Could you make some covers? And I just have the sizes written down. So I know if I ever wanna like give her a little jazzed up cover to like mix it up, like, oh, here's your summer pillow. Here's your winter pillow. Here's your birthday pillow. I haven't made her a birthday pillow, but I but you should because I know the sizes. Yes, exactly. That's a good idea, and that's a lot less hassle to try and wrap because there's no <laughs> pillow for it. Well, and pillows aren't super expensive, but the oh, yeah. down pillows are more expensive. And to get a down pillow, you need to go to an interior decorating store. Um, that's where you're going to find them. You can find other pillow forms outside of the box stores too. And honestly, where I got the cording was at the interior decorating store, and the one near me was cheaper than the box store was. Yeah. So don't just think that the box stores have the best deals on stuff. Um, look outside of that. But that's where you see um, interior designers. I mean, that's a pillows are a big deal, and they make a lot of money on those, and you can make them yourself. I think yeah. that they're fairly easy to make. Um, so. Yeah, so. That's what I know. That's what we know. <laughs> okay, we're going to take a closer look at A Star is Born, and we'll be right back. Okay, we're back. So, um, <laughs> you're so excited. Really? No. So the next thing that we're going to be talking about is working with print fabrics. Yeah, I had to tune in for this one because, like, literally, I'm like, That's good. I'm, it's all in. Wait, 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 wait. I didn't pick this topic, though. Who picked this topic? Was this a viewer suggestion? I picked it because I need help. <laughs> Think I'm in this for the lols? No. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you got me so tickled. What do you need help with? I mean, okay, we use print all the time. In, yes, however, in all most of our the, quilts, most of the time that we're working with prints, it's a line of fabric that was designed to work together, yeah. like Krista's line. All she's picked similar palette. You know, it's not all muted; it's bright. So, like, cool. Right. That's kind of easy because she designed it to work together. Okay. So what are you, okay, so maybe that's it. What are your questions about working How do I prints? do it? How do you do it? <laughs> okay, well, I think the first jumping off place is finding <laughs> a print you like. Okay. Okay. So. I don't like that one. Get the other one. <laughs> get, oh, get the one with the thing on the bottom that you just had. This? Yeah, that one. Okay. So <laughs> she said she likes this I like fabric. that one. Okay. Cool. I could just put like a solid green and a solid red and a solid coral with it, right? And then I've worked with prints. You could, yes. And that's a great one because it's got lots of different colors that you could go with. So I think if you <laughs> added that with it, it will definitely add to it. Okay. You don't like I'm it's in. making it's tonal. you nervous. No, it's tonal. I'm good with it's tonal. tonal. I can handle tonal. This one makes you nervous. So oh, look it? out. Okay. <laughs> oh. Mm. Like right next to each other? 
Yeah. <sighs> like, I don't have a problem with that. Okay, but then I'm going to put this one in. I'm good for that. It's tonal. Cool, cool. Then I'm going to put this one in. All right. I'm in. Now I've made them all talk to each other, though. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. So because this does not have any green, but this does, and right. this has this, so that's happy. But this has all, you know, these are talking to each other. It sounds like a very complicated, like, seating arrangement for a fancy wedding. Kind of, yeah. That's a good way to look at it, actually. You know, who gets along with who, and who do you put next together that will help them get along or introduce that sounds like it involves feelings, though. <laughs> it does. Some fabric have feelings. And like, you, you don't want to come to my off. wedding, and if you want chicken on a stick, then you better get along with the person next to you. But, That's how I work with okay, fabric. Okay, so honestly, <laughs> I, now that I've done this, this will all be in a block, like, later today. Okay. Because I think, and honestly, I did just pull these out of my But it's a lot stash. of orange. Yes, but, okay, let me redefine. I've been working on, the reason these got pulled is I've been working on a quilt that I, I set up rules for myself when I work on new projects, Okay. right? So one of my rules when I work with a new project is I'll say, like, every block has to have these three colors in it. Okay. And then my next rule is, and this one's going to drive you crazy, I cannot repeat any fabric once it's been used as an element in the block. Okay. So To any other block or within that block again? Well, like, so if I, I've been working on New York Beauty, so they have these spikes on a mm -hmm. curve. So if I use, let's say, this orange. On a spike. On a spike. I'm going to use it on all the spikes on that curve. Right. And then I can't use this orange again. In that block or in any other block in the same quilt? Any other block in the same quilt. Okay. So I'm really depending a lot on my stash. Yes. To, like, make this quilt successful but because my rule is that it has to have three colors in it every block has to have the same three colors the same three colors on the quilt i'm currently working on is orange green and purple so every block has orange green and purple in it but they can't be the same fabric of orange green or purple so that gives so you, you need 63 different oranges 63 different greens and 63 different purples at least because new york beauty has a bunch of so there could be a lot of other things that go with it. So anyway, what what I think when I'm working with prints is, a one, I want to use them all, and I want to see how they can all work together. I really do. It's like a challenge for me is to see how many I can put in this quilt and be successful. Um, the other thing I think you have to look at with working with prints is scale and size. Yes. Right. So in our example over here, you know, the orange is bigger scale than this tiny purple. But that's, you know, what these two, the purple and the green are similar size scale, where these two scales are a little bit different, too. So if you're using big prints, how can you figure out how to use medium and small prints to go with that? Right. Um, so. And the other question is, what color does it read, which you kind of lent to when you said mm -hmm. it's tonal. Right. I would say that the the green, the purple, and the orange, and these three are all tonal. Yes. Right? This is not. No. This goes between the two. Right. Yeah, cause, but that to me reads more purple than... Yes, if I were sorting, because I arrange my stash by color, I would put it with the purples. Which is a good point, but... All right, so if you put it with the purples, yeah, it's going to live well with the purples. Mm -hmm. I like it with the purples. But if I put it with the orange, it lives just as well with the orange. Yeah, I was just talking about storage, not like in a block. <laughs> oh, true. <laughs> but that's important if your storage is not seen. Right. Mine is, so I have that. I have the flexibility there. Of looking at what you... Because I think some people store fabric and they put it in totes. And I used to do that when I first started, and I think that is... Well, you kind of forget what you have. Yeah. I, and you're like, you I really love this print, and you buy another two yards of it. <laughs> and you get back, and you're like, I already had two yards of it. Why do I have four yards of this print? And then you'll put it in the inside of a pillow. No, that'll be on the back of a quilt, because that's four yards of fabric, man. <laughs> oh, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> so me, for me, there has to be some kind of bridge okay. to get fabric to talk to each other. So, um, but for beginners, I mean, what we just put out there is pretty advanced. But for beginners, 
you know, a line of fabric, there's nothing wrong with a line of fabric. Those three talk to each other. They're all teal. I'm in. You're in. Um, but what other color would you put with that that it would be successful? See, my go-to would be red because there's some red in there already. I think that's a great go-to. But what if you want to mix it up? I would do a gray, like a dark gray. Dark gray would be good. Yeah, the gray would be crazy good. But what if you did something, you know, like a green? Well, I can't see it, so I don't know. It's hard for me to see right. the thing. All right. So what if you did a green? Um, see, the green to me is too springy, and that's supposed to be... Agree. This print is kind of a springy print, but this green would be kind of fun with that, actually. That green and red would totally pop. Um, it totally <laughs> pop. You could do it, but a, gray, uh, but a gray or red is very, like, I think, very easy to do. Mm -hmm. Now, I like this. This is a print that I've had for a while. Yeah, I would lean into the green on that one to add to it. Okay. Only because there's already so much blue. Um, would you lean into this green as a dark green? Uh, yeah, because I think there's some of that in there. Would you lean into this green as a light green? Mm. I like the darker one. They both work. Yeah, but my preference is for the darker one. I actually would do both greens because I am like all about how many fabrics can we put into it. And then I would start pulling some of these blues and t kind of lavender purples, mm -hmm. and like that would flush that out. Yes. And I think those would be really cool. And then if you brought in those blues and purples, they would all talk to each other, which would be really exciting. Okay. Right? Yes. So I, I actually start with a print that I really like and then kind of build from there. Mm -hmm. Or I just determine that I want to use this. And, and I, that print is what you call the bridge. That's kind of my bridge, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, now what about, and I don't know that you have examples for this. What about um, a similar theme? Like, I'm going to have all florals. Are there rules that you need to stick to if you pull in all your floral fabrics? No. No. Even I if know. it's like uh, summer abstract and uh, summer no. realistic. and I, summer, If yeah. you look at my quilts, no. Like. Okay. Honestly, the quilt that I'm currently, and this is maybe a little bit of that, the current, the quilt that I'm currently working on, um, I'm trying to use as many novelty fabrics as I can. Okay. Without it being a novelty, like, child quilt. Okay. Because I think novelty fabrics can read um, youth, mm -hmm. but I don't want it to read that way. And I think if you look at color as color and not what's actually in the print... They work together. Now, what about directional? Because I see that one's directional. Does it, it does that matter at all, or is it still just color? It's color to me. And so I pulled some red to go with it, because the red. I like this orange with it, which isn't exactly the right color orange, mm -hmm. but it still works. And then I like this blue plaid with it. I think that works too. Okay. Here's my real question, though. Like, yes. The red, the orange, and the blue are all prints by definition because there is visual texture. Right. To me, I'm thinking more prints with like multiple colors in the same fabric. Like, okay. And, and that's what I struggle with of like to okay. make it more interesting. All right. We got anything for that? Um, kind of. I didn't bring exactly what I would have done. But okay, so here's a butterfly print that I yes. like. Right? It's got a lot of color in it. Would you put this with it? Not with that being the only fabric with it. No, because you need bridges to make it talk. Yeah. So if I put the pink there, and the green here, and the yellow there, and then maybe pull in this green, now there's enough stuff going on yes. that these are going to talk to each other. Yes. Yeah, that's it. You just got to keep pulling in more stuff to make those bridges happen. If you got two excitable friends at the same party and that's it, it's a pretty wacky party. But right. if you bring in some calm introverts to hang out with them, right. it it's makes them look work. not so crazy. Yes, exactly. Party planning. Look, fabric is all about party planning. It is. How did we know? <laughs> and actually, I, was, I had these three pulled to put in one of those New York Beauty things. Okay. So...
But that's one of those cork fabrics that looks like cork, mm -hmm. but it's really fabric, which mm -hmm. I kind of like. This is very modern, and this is very traditional paisley. Cool. Um, so I don't think that you should look at fabric or prints and say this is only use, you know, 1800 production stuff with 1800 production stuff. Um, and I think that there's a lot of shuffling that you could do. Like, you could do this print with that Ooh. real easy. You don't like it? It's totally going to work. It, it needs some calm friends in there. Yeah, that's better. Make you feel better? <laughs> that's overkill. It no, works too green. No, it's, it's not too, too, green. Green. It's too green. This is yellow. That's not green. That's I would. Green. I wouldn't. I don't have it in front of me, but I would pull in a mustard too. That oh, yeah, mustard be would be awesome with that. But those would all work. Okay. Now, um, anything to do with odd numbers, rules of three, any of that? Like, would you put to me two two bold prints and three calmer? That's nice. Is nice. Do you need more balance? Like, okay, because there's five fabrics total, or do you need to go like three prints and two calm? Or what do, block just, are you I doing? I mean, then then you have to look at okay, what up. I know what block are you doing? So I'm if you're doing, it. well, that's what I do. <laughs> that's exactly what I do. So when you're looking at the block and you're going, it's just a nine patch, and you just put all these in a nine patch, that would be rough. I don't know that they would work as well together. Whereas if you had a block that was like a star print and this was your star and then these became the like points the off background. the side or in the background or something like that then i think that the balance it just depends on what the block is and how much of that fabric you're actually putting in it and remember when you're looking at these big prints like this um if you're cutting a two inch square Where's that two inches coming from? Because mm -hmm. that could change the look of that print tremendously. Yep. So how big of a space are you using that print? And how big is the print kind of thing? Um, but definitely uh, consider that as part of your thing. Okay. I love prints. And I, and I literally, uh, seriously, I try <laughs> to put as many as I can. And if you're intimidated by that, then just use a line. Just, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with, I don't tend to do that. I tend to look at a line of fabric and pick and choose, cherry pick what I want out of it. But I, I think quilts that are made of a line of fabric are gorgeous. I am not going to criticize those at all. I don't tend to make those. You don't tend to make those. Well, maybe you do. Yeah. <laughs> I made that. It's from a line of fabric. But what I was thinking was you tend to... I will go all in on the scrappy of like, everything reads orange or everything reads blue. Yes. And then it doesn't... You know. That's what I was thinking. Like you, when you do <laughs> scrappy stuff, it's not a line of fabric. Correct. I think the difference is, and we were having this conversation the other day, I think the difference is, is you do scrappy quilts and I do stashy quilts which I just made up. That's true, she did. <laughs> I, think, I think my quilts are stashy because I'm using my stash, not necessarily scraps. And I that am... means cutting from bigger pieces of fabric, not, oh, right. I've already got two-inch squares cut. Right, she's bigger. already got two-inch squares cut up. I never do that. Because, one, I can't keep up with it. And, two, it overwhelms me because then I think, well, what if I need a four inch out of that particular fabric and it's already cut up into two inches? And then I'm stressed about that. And I can't handle it. So I use stashy quilts because what I'm doing is I'm actually planning the block from my stash on what could go together. And I try to take the biggest risk possible to see if it'll work. Take a picture of it, get away from it, back off. Does it still work? And does it work with everything else that you're working on? And I think I think we should do a master class on this because I've got a lot. To me, this is like a like a huge conversation that would be fun to have with a group of people. Well, it's just the two of us right now. But we can change that. Let's we figure out how to do that. Okay. <laughs> well, well, someday my prints will come. <laughs> but are you ready for more than one print? 
you can let us know. Leave a comment on our blog or the YouTube episode or in our Facebook group, What's Up Stitches. And that's all we have for today's episode. This show is made possible by the Stitch TV Show Shop, your place for quilt patterns, the Stitch TV Show merchandise, laser cut applique kits. We'd like to thank 77 Peaches and Big Think Productions for producing the stitch. If you've enjoyed the show, please like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to turn on the notices on YouTube to know immediately when a new episode drops. The next virtual stitch-in is Friday, January 11th at 7 p.m. U.S. Eastern, broadcast live on our YouTube channel. And our next book club episode's January 25th. My podcast, Hip to be a Square, will be out Fridays or Saturdays on iTunes or Google Play. All those details and more can be found on our website, thestitchtvshow.com, along with links to purchase the Stitch TV Show merchandise and video classes. Tune in next time for more Quilting Chat with Friends.